so now it's time that we go through the command line basics of any Linux terminal. Now the Linux terminal is a very powerful tool. It allows you to move around the whole operating system through the files and folders. It allows you to create files, change their permissions, change how they behave, and a bunch of other things. You can do filtering, you can grab stuff, the specific stuff from a specific file, and there's a bunch of interesting things that you can do. And as an ethical hacker, you will be working with a Linux distribution most of the time, whether it may be Kali Linux or some other thing like Parrot OS. But you will be working on Linux most of the time because it's a powerful tool for networking analysis and scanning and all sorts of stuff that you want to do as an ethical hacker. So the first essential step is to actually know how to use the tool that is available to you. And that is out here, which is the terminal. Now, as I'm running this on a virtual machine, you might find it that my execution times are much slower. And that is because I have a very, very slow laptop because my virtual machine is actually eating up a lot of my RAM and I have a bunch of other processes that are also rendering. I do this on my free time. So let's go ahead and go through the commands that we are going to actually go through. Now, let me actually make a list of commands that I want to teach you guys. So let me see if leafpad is available. Firstly, leafpad is basically a text editor. So the first command that we are going to start off with is CD. Now, CD stands for change directory. Now, at this moment, we are in the root directory. As you guys can see, we can print the current working directory with this thing called PWD. And that is a current working directory. As you see, it's called root. And suppose we want to change our directory to the home directory. So all we have to do is CD, which stands for change directory, as I just said, and specify the path. Now, CD slash home. Okay, so once we're in home, I want to make a list of commands that are used on the CLI that I want to teach to you guys. So what would I do? I would firstly see if any files are available that I can edit. Okay, so these files are available, but let's create a new file for ourselves. So firstly, let's do nano list txt now what nano does is nano will open up a small command line text editor now command line text editors are very much used by ethical hackers because they save a bunch of time if you're always switching between gui and command line because you'll be doing a bunch of stuff on the command line and suppose you want to write something you're always switching to gui it's a waste of time and you want to save time as an ethical hacker so you can use this thing called a command line editor and it's it can basically do most of the stuff a gui editor would do now you say nano and the name of this file. So nano basically has created this file now and it has opened up this new fresh window which overrides the command line that we were in the bash. And this is the place where you can actually edit what goes into the file. Now let's see the list of commands that I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you ls. ls will be the list of files. We did cd. We saw a pwd. So that was the print working directory. We'll be looking at how you can copy stuff with the CP command. Then we'll be looking at MV, which is basically move. Then we'll be looking at cat, and that's an interesting one. And also less, which is another interesting thing. Then we'll be looking at grep, which is actually used for grepping or grabbing things from files that you might want to see. You'll see what I mean in a short while. We'll see echo, which probably does what you think if you have any experience with Linux. Then we'll be doing touch and we'll be doing make dir, which is make directory. And then we'll do in ch own, ch mod, then one of the most dangerous commands that is rm. And then you can do man plus help. Okay. So these are the list of commands that we are going to go through in this part of the video. So suppose I was making this video and I wanted to save this somewhere. So if you see down here, there are a bunch of options that are shown to you. Now, this caret sign might be not what you're thinking that the shift six one, it's not shift six. It's actually a control. So caret is control and then G of course means G. So if you go control G, it will actually get help. Now, what we want to do is save the file and that is control O and that is write out. So what we want to do is say control O and now it's going to say if we want to name the file list.txt and we want to name the file and it says that we have written down 15 lines. So that's how you save a file. Now all we want to do is exit out of here. Okay. So first let's go LS and let's go through whatever there is. So LS shows us the list of files that are there in that directory. 
Now, LS can also show you the list of files in a directory with the paths that you specify. Like if I say LS var, it'll show me everything that is in var. Okay, there are a lot of interesting things in var. So let's head over to var. So cd slash var and you hit enter. And now we are in the folder var. So now to actually demonstrate how powerful LS is, we have a few flags. Now to see the flags of any command, you can just do dash dash help universally throughout the Unix command line. So out here you see some information that is kind of tough to read, but if you go on top and scroll out here, you'll see all the flags that you can use with the command that is LS and how you can use them. So you can see what to use and you can read a little bit about it. So if you use all, it ignores entries starting with dot. So suppose we were to do LS in var, let's see. So it shows us like this. Now, if you do LSL, it'll show a long list with more information. So these are the permissions that you see out here. We will be seeing how we can change the permissions of files soon enough. And this is who owns the file, the user and the user group. This is the file number, I guess. I'm not sure. This is when they were created. The name of the file. This is the time when the file was created, I guess. Okay, so that's how you get very detailed information about all the files. Now, there's another thing you might want to use with LS, and that is the A tag. So you can go LSA, and it will show you all the hidden files also. So now you see some two files that were not shown out here. Our file list begins from backup. But when we do ls slash, I mean hyphen la, we see two more files that is dot and dot dot. So let's see if we can move into that cd dot. So we can't even move into that. So that's interesting. So these are hidden files. So these are not seen to random users and we can actually do stuff with them. We'll see how we can use hidden files later on. So if you want to show hidden files through ls, you all you have to do is ls and hyphen la. So that was all about ls. So let's move back to slash home where our list of commands that I want to show you all was. So cd home, let's ls and see what was it called. It's called list. And suppose I want to see the contents of list.txt. All I have to do is say list.txt. Now it shows us whatever this file is containing. It'll read it out for you. So we've done cd, we've done ls and its various forms. We've done pwd. Now it's time to do CP. So CP is basically used for copying files from one place to another. So suppose I want to copy this address file that is there into some other directory, let's say var. So all I would have to do is CP name.txt and then you specify which location you want to actually copy it to. So CD slash var. So this is where I want to copy my file to and you hit enter and it's copied. But that was a very small file. Now we can actually check if it was copied before I move on and pour some more knowledge into you. So let's go into var, so cd slash var, hit enter and you're in var again and you see ls and now you see a name.txt. So let's remove name.txt from here because I wanna copy it again and show you all a difference between a flag that I'm gonna use right now. So the hyphen and letters that you use are called flags technically in the Linux terminology. So let's go back to home. Now, instead of the name of the file and moving back to home, just like I did, you can type out the complete name of the file out here. So you could have gone cd slash home slash name.txt and copy to slash var. But this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the hyphen v, which is basically used for a verbose output of whatever you're doing. So most of the commands that we're going to using will have a hyphen V with them. So let's see how this actually affects the output. So what we're going to do is we want to copy. So P and verbose and we want to copy the file name.txt and we want to copy it to the folder called var, right? So now you'll see that it will give us what is being moved rather that is name.txt and where it is being moved to. So this is a very good way of knowing what is actually happening because if you do it without the verbose part and suppose name.txt was just a 20 GB file and you just don't know if it has finished or not. So if it's a 20 GB file, it'll continuously update you on where what is being copied. So basically all you have to do is type hyphen V if you want to know where your file is being copied and the exact path. Okay, so that was about how you can copy files from here and there. Now, what was the next command that we want to see? So cat. 
So let me just go and see the next command that is there. So list.txt. So after cat, I want to show less. Okay, so we've done CP. We also have to do MV. Now, as you guys can see that CP is basically a copy. Copy is as you would expect. It leaves a copy of the file that in the original directory while also maintaining a copy in the directory that you specified. But if you want to move the file completely, all you would have to do is use the command MV. So MV is for moving the file. Now let's see what all goes with MV. So you can type help. And as I said, you get the verbose option and you get suffixes. You can force things to happen. So suppose you don't have the permission. Do not prompt before overwriting. So it'll give you a prompt and you can completely overlook the prompt with the F thing. So let me just show you how that looks like. We'll be doing a verbose and we will be copying the address txt file. And okay, so every time I've been actually typing, so you can do address.txt by just pressing tab and it'll autocomplete. So address.txt to slash var. Now it'll show you that it is actually renamed address.txt to var address.txt. Now, if you go and do ls out here, you will see that address.txt is not actually here, but if we were to move to var, so cd slash var. Okay, I've also been typing out commands that I've been previously using, and you can simply toggle through all the commands that you've used by the up and down keys. So ls, mv, mvv help, cat list. I did cd home, and now I have to go through all this just to prove a point. So cd var, we want to change there. Now we're in the variable folder and we also want to see what we have out here. So address should be out here and ls and as you guys can see address.txt is the first file that has come up and it is basically the same file and I can prove that to you by just catting the file and address.txt and you see that is some random address for some random person. Okay, now let's quickly clear out our file, our window. You can do that with the control L or you can just type out clear. Now, what we want to do is move back to home. So, yes, yeah, CD home. Okay, so now that we're back in home again, let's cat out our next file. So, list.txt. And after move, I want to go through cat. Now, cat, as you guys can see, is printing out the contents of a file. And there's also less, which does something very similar to cat. So, let's see what it does. So, if you go less and do list.txt you actually see the contents of the file in a completely new window, which overlays on the previous window. And this is a very neat way to actually see the contents of a file, which is through less. If you want to keep your main command line interface not so cluttered, which cat clutters it completely. So if you want to get out of this place, this less place, and all you have to do is press Q. And Q gets you back, and as you see, Nothing was printed out on our main interface. So this is a very cool way to actually keep your command line interface neat and tidy when you're doing work. Okay, so grep. So grep is used for actually filtering out stuff from a file. So suppose we want to see whether a command has some verbose option to it or not. So now I know that MV has a verbose command, but suppose I didn't know that. So MV dash dash help, then you use the pipe sign. So what the pipe sign means is you have to take this command, the first command, and then you pipeline it through the second command. And you want to see grep hyphen V if that exists. Okay, so let's see grep verbose. Yep, so a verbose exists, and that is hyphen V, and that's hyphen hyphen verbose. So explaining what is being done. So what happened out here is basically we took this first command and then we filter it, and filtering is done through the piping. So basically think about you're taking some information and pipelining it through something else which funnels it out of this command which is grep so you can use mv slash help in conjunction with a bunch of other commands just not grep and i'll leave the creativity up to you so grep is basically used for getting what you want from a file and grep is used very very much throughout this course of this video through this Carl linux tutorial that you're going to be watching so that is a very easy way to see if you have a particular option or let me do something else also. So cd slash var. Now we're in the var folder and let's ls. We actually have name.txt. Now let's also go into backup. So cd b and tab and that brings us to backup folder and we're now in the backup folder. Let's do an ls out here. Okay, so we have a bunch of files. Okay, we have some password.back. 
Now, see, if you have cat and you go password dot back, you can see the entire thing. Now, what if you didn't want this entirety of it? Or if you want something in particular, you want to be very neat. So you can do that same command. You can pipeline it and you can say grep and you want everything with no login. So we can see that there are a bunch of things that say no login and we only want those. And these are all the things that say no login in them. And it's a much lesser list and it gives us a very particular list that you are looking for. So that is how you use grep. So now let's head back to home. Uh, okay, I typed that wrong. And again, let's see what the next command is. So now let's start the XT. So we've done grep. We now have to do echo. Echo and then touch. Okay, let's go back. Q. We press Q and we get out of there. So what did I have to teach again? I'm such a dummy. We have to do echo. Okay, so what is echo used for? So suppose you were to say echo and open code hello world. It would basically do what command says, and that is echo whatever you say. Now it'll say echo hello world, and that will basically echo whatever you typed out in the quotations that is hello world, spelled very wrong. Okay, now suppose you want to actually put this into a file. So you could do echo hello world, let's spell it properly this time, and you want to insert into a file. We had a phone number, I guess, phone number.txt, yep, and we can echo it into that thing. Now that was done. Now let's see what is phone number.txt. Phone number.txt and it says hello world. So you can basically input text into a certain file with the echo command and that's how you do it. Okay, now let's also see how you can make directories and that is with the make directory command. So, okay, we also have to do touch before that, I forgot. Now touch is used for quickly creating files. So touch, you could say touch and then the file name so we can create a name file again name.txt or that will create a name.txt let me just show it to you lsl and we have a name.txt we can also create multiple files with touch and you could say file one file two and file three so like this you can create multiple files and let me just ls that out and show it to you lsl and we have file one file two and file three now we can also create a directory so make dir and the name of the directory so suppose you wanted to save all your movies in one directory it makes directory movie and now you have a directory called movies and you can also move into movies so cd movie okay so that's how you create directories and you can move into them with the change directory folder now let's see what the next command was so cd and dot dot so if it's cd dot dot you can move back to the previous folder if i'm already not told you that and since we're in movies, we can just go back to home with cd dot dot after. Now let's see what else is there. So cat list dot txt. And okay, now ch own ch mod. Now ch own will be a little tough to show because we don't have any sort of other user out here. The root user is the only user that we have on this virtual box that is set up. But if you want to change the ownership of a file, so let's say. So you can see the ownership of a file through the lsl command and you see that root and root. So this is the owner name and this is the owner group and they're mostly the same thing. So our next command that we're going to actually see is called chown. So let's see how chown is actually used. chown is used for changing the ownership of a file. So I actually don't remember how to use chown. So if you actually don't remember or you're getting stuck somewhere, just use the help function. So if a command line argument is symbolic, so let me just go through this once. So this is how you use it, owner and then colon group. Okay, and then the file name. So you go ch own, and then you want to say the name of the owner and the group you want it to belong to, that is root and root. And then you specify the name of the file. So suppose I want to change file one. Now it already belongs to root and root, so it doesn't really matter because I don't have any other username to actually change the ownership to. So this is how you would normally change ownership. So let me just show you where you can see the ownership and that is ls hyphen L and out here the root and root you see on file one is basically this is the owner and this is the owner group. They're normally the same thing and the same name, but if you had some different owner like a guest, you could change it by actually using the ch own method or the command. Methods are different things. I always get confused because of the programming. Okay, now the next command that is left is called chmod. 
to actually show you how chmod works, let me show you an interesting file. So suppose, let me just do this once. Okay, now echo. What we want to echo is, let's echo hello world. And uh, let's put that in quotation and we want to put this in test. Now, once we've done that, let's ls and we see that we have a test file out here. And we want to move test to test.sh. So test.sh is the executable file that is used in bash scripting. So we move test to test.sh and the way you actually execute bash files on your command line is with the dot and the slash. So you say dot slash and if I press T and I press tab, you see that there is no options that's coming up. That is because test.sh is not an executable file. So test.sh is don't have the executable permission. So let me just show that to you. LS and you see test.sh. It doesn't have the executable. Now you see movie, it is executable. I don't know why it is a directory. So it is an executable. You can move into it. So it's blue in color. So the way you actually can make this an executable is by changing its permissions. So the way you do that is chmod and basically you change it to an executable. So plus X uh, that is making an executable. If you do plus R, it'll make it readable. And if you do plus W, it'll make it writable also. So if you do plus X and do test.sh and now you go and do LSL, you'll see that test.sh has become green because it is an executable file now. And now if you do dot slash and you press T, you get test.sh if I press tab. So now it is an executable file and if I execute it, it presses out hello world under my screen. So that's how you can use the chmod or which is basically the change of permissions of files and we'll be changing permissions of files throughout the course of this video it'll be very useful for us and you'll see as we go along with this video okay so the next thing that i want to show you all only two are left and i remember those now and it is rm and rm is used for actually removing files so you should be very careful while using rm or any sort of removing command on a Linux system because once you remove something, it is very difficult to get it back and it's almost near impossible. It's not like Windows where it's basically just disappeared in front of your eyes, but it's still there in the memory cluttering it all up. That's why Linux always trumps Windows. That's one of the reasons. I'll make a video on that later on. But for now, let's focus on RM. Now we can remove file one. So let's see. So file one is going to be removed. So if we LS now, you see file one doesn't exist, but let me show you rm and if i do movie it'll say cannot remove movie is a directory but if you go into the help menu i bet there will be a option that you can just forcefully remove it so rm force will just remove so rm slash r and you can do movie and it'll recursively remove everything and if you go here and do lsl you'll see that there is no movie directory anymore and that is how you can remove movies now that prompt that you see out there is actually a safety measure because once you remove a directory and it's not retrievable that's a very sad scenario and you don't want to get yourself in such a scenario in whatsoever possibility okay moving on so on so forth that was all about the rm folder now you can do rm and the address of anything so rm i know we moved an address.txt so into the var folder we can go rm var and address.txt and that will remove address.txt from the folder of var let me just show you that worked so cd var and ls and you see that there is no address.txt out here okay another way to get help for any command that you want is man and suppose you want to see about rm It'll show everything about RM that is there to show to you. It'll show you how to use it. It'll give you a description, synopsis, the name, remove files or directories. It's a very useful way. So out here you see this is a manual page. So that is where it means man. And you can press line one or edge or you can press Q to quit. So that's very much helpful. Okay guys, so that was all about the command line interface and how we can use it to go about the operating system and change file permissions, copy files, move files, and a bunch of other stuff.